Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Waterwise and welcome back to From the Depths Most Wanted. About time we got back to this. And today we are covering the Pyre, a Grey Talent godly craft, which I feel it isn't the most scary uh, thing that the Grey Talons have, but it is the perfect example of a flying brick. And just because... I don't know, it's not as dangerous, I feel, as the Empyrean. Um, it's smaller and less expensive for one thing, but it is very annoying, so that's why we're covering it today. This is possibly one of the brickiest flying bricks in the whole game, and um, I won't show it, but uh, I just out of curiosity uh, tested this thing against the Singularity, and uh, the Pyre won. So the Snig badly needs some TLC, uh, by the looks of it. Um, but yeah, so what is this thing's deal? Well, firstly, and most egregiously, uh, this thing is mostly just heavy armor wet. This is, see, look at this. This is ridiculous. This is just silly, just how many heavy armor wedges are in here. Uh, this is a meta which I feel a lot of people are kind of sick of, hence the plasma update. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, which means it's incredibly tough. Um, even against very strong weapons, uh, the Pyre uh, has a rotten habit of just staying in the air, staying fighting, and just weathering a absolutely stupid amount of punishment simply because of all these freaking wedges, man. And uh, it also dishes it. So probably the main uh, scary thing on here is... Uh, uh, excuse me, weapons on the front. Uh, these are not cram cannons. They're just exquisitely decoed. Uh, these are Beam Rider Thumper Missiles. So, yeah, these things hurt like hell. Uh, the Grey Talons in general uh, seem to be very fond of uh, Thumper Missiles in general. And um, this is probably one of the differences between this and the Empyrean. The Empyrean uses uh, remote guided uh, missiles, uh, the Pyre uh, uses uh, Beam Rider Missiles. So, uh, you can see all the stats here. It's 450 thump damage um, per meter per second, and times a max speed of 376 meters per second. Assuming past me has done uh, the math correctly, that's over. That's uh, 169,200 uh, thump damage from a missile, and it has six of them. And just for giggles, it also has um, extra missiles up here, uh, shape charge uh, missiles as well. Just, you know, this is a missile spamming thing, and um, it's very upsetting to have this thing shot at you, and this is quite clever, actually. I failed to see these uh, in my initial analysis of this, uh, simply because they're hidden very well. They're uh, vertically ejected uh, by the looks of them, and just disguised. So, that fooled me completely. Well done. Well done, people who worked on the pyre, uh, starting with HW Boy 3 and probably other people. Um... It's also got shields, so I'm just going to spawn in a sacrificial lamb of some kind. Just five marauders. One marauder won't last long enough. Uh, so if we uh, shrink all the blocks and watch this thing uh, do what it does best, you can, well, immediately see all its party tricks. We'll go over them bit by bit. So uh, strength... No, that's a smoke dispenser. Where the hell is the shield at? Hello? There we go, so strength 10 shields, just, you know, because. Shield color settings, let's go alpha. It's got pretty damn good shield coverage. Shields all over the place, very strong. Uh, so uh, it's really kinetic resistance uh, between all the heavy armor wedges and the shield projectors. Uh, shells tend to bounce off this quite a lot, and lasers really don't do much at all uh, between the shields and between the smoke. So that's... Uh, yeah, immediately, like, you know, you can't just spam Sabo at this thing, unless it's a hell of a lot of Sabo, and lasers are just not going to do anything. Uh, you also would have seen these particle cannons firing over here. Uh, so these things are... what are they set to, I believe? These are set to... impact. Uh, nice uh, pack spaghetti in there. Uh, so this thing has hitscan weapons, which means that small craft are not a good idea to use against it. It will shoot them down if I spawn in. A huge mob of flying squirrels, for instance. Um, taking all bets. So, yeah, let's see here. And it looks like that these packs are on a timer. 
Hell, never mind the particle cannons, the other weapons are also uh, gonna be taking this. Although they did manage to. Whoa, they knocked 3% health off. Hooray for flying squirrels. Um, they're not lasting very long though. So yeah, there's that. Um, the main APS guns, which by the way are managing to land shots, that they just blew up that squirrel, no problem. Uh, the main APS turrets on the side here are actually pure Sabo. So, um, 274 millimeters, 1828 meters per second, uh, over 7000 kinetic damage and 80 AP. And I believe there are disruptors mixed in with there. Uh, I'm not sure of where they are exactly. Uh, I checked the ammo inputs and I'm not seeing any of them that, like, you know, actually have. Uh, disruptors loaded. There might be an ACB somewhere uh, that switches the ammo and I just haven't found it. Uh, but yeah, just be aware uh, that this thing has very nasty shells actually. Well, it's not the nastiest shells, but um, they're nasty enough, certainly. So let's go here, main sabos. Uh, this is the shell. These aren't rail guns, uh, funny enough. They're just pure gunpowder, but uh, yeah, 80, just, you know, 80 AP, 7000 KD, they laugh in the face of heavy armor, and uh, each one of these shells actually can take out a heavy armor beam uh, just in one shot, because heavy armor has 60 AP and um, about 6000 health. In fact, it can do full damage to stacked heavy armor, so that's, uh, that's these guns are just a middle finger to anything that relies on heavy armor, really. And what else, what else, what else? We've got secondary APS up here, these things are Seawiz. And they are 90 millimeters, also not railguns, um, which is interesting. Uh, they do about 574.2 RPM with about 22.2 AP. Oh, 1,400 KD more than, and has the uh, odd tracks around mixed in. Incidentally, it is just funny that it's using gin and tonic, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I haven't found where the secondary sabers and the disruptor shells go. Presumably they go somewhere. There's a lot on this craft. I. It's hard to find everything. Uh, maybe, let's just have a look. Mm, nope. Nope, I don't know where those go. But anyway, uh, da, da, da. they also, this thing also has missile interceptors hither and thither. Let's just repair everything. And so over here, you will see, cunningly hidden, uh, decos can sometimes make things hard to see. Uh, so we've got missile interceptors with turning thrusters. Interestingly, they don't this is an interesting thing. No fins, just turning thrusters. I, I might steal that design. So it has a whole bunch of them up there. It also has a whole bunch of them down here, mounted on spin blocks, by the looks of it, uh, that just are fired backwards. So this thing is reasonably missile-proof. As you saw, the flying squirrels did manage to put a dent on it, uh, but not much of one. And particularly, this thing... Uh, I don't know. It's not the most ludicrous interceptor... Uh, spam I've ever seen. Uh, probably the uh, Goshawk has a more egregious one, but yeah, th this thing is this thing can deal with missiles. You can't just chuck missiles at it and you know have an easy time. And you've probably noted already that this thing has a nuke spawner uh, back here. This is, in fact looks like the same model that's used on the Imperium. So if I turn off literally uh, all the guns on the pyre and spawn an oh I don't know a Marauder. Uh, you will see here that it immediately starts manufacturing nukes, uh, just because. I actually turned this nuke off, um, just so we could have some peace and quiet, and also because these nukes have a rotten habit of uh, flying straight into the pyre. So this is uh, your standard issue uh, Grey Talon ICBM. Uh, very annoying, very, very annoying. If you don't have lasers or particle cannons or anything like that, well, that happens. And this is actually the... Um, the tiebreaker between this and the uh, and the singularity because the singularity for some reason doesn't like prioritize shooting suicide craft they get close so yeah and uh, even though it has lasers which is a bit of an oversight I feel so in a matchup between this and the singularity the singularity would probably win if it wasn't for these nukes that kept spawning in so they are very well made I really need to just steal them I need to steal them and then just swap out the custom jets for like uh, steam jets or something like that. Uh, but you get the idea. Um, this thing is uh, quite uh, quite scary and we're not even done through the strength list. Uh, spawns and nukes. This thing's also quite fast. So it has a top speed of 87 meters per second and just as it's uh, cruising around in a circle, it's, you know, 
it's just, where is it? I lost it. It's uh, going at like 70 meters per second, like easy. And that's because uh, you've probably noticed this thing is, uh, whatever's not heavy armor uh, or just guns is custom jets. It um, has two big custom jets there, it has more regular jets here, there, and everywhere. So it just goes like stink. And what else, what else, what else? It also bobs up and down. So you will note, let's see. Let's see here. So if we spawn in a whole bunch of marauders again and turn the guns off because we want the marauders to actually last a little while. Let's see, looking at the altitude, yep, so it's dropping down and it's bobbing back up. Let's see, yep, so this thing does do the bobbing thing, annoyingly. Uh, <coughs> it does that just enough that um, if you're not close enough, uh, if your projectiles aren't particularly quick, it can dodge them, so that's a bit of an issue. It is uh, not just a flying brick, it's a bouncing flying brick. Worst kind. Uh, it's also really hard to knock out of the air, uh, because like I said, this thing will fly until it dies. So let's go here, and you will just see just how many custom jets are in here. Lots of them. Big ones. Uh, these ones are actually pointing... Um, up, so to speak. Well, pointing down, I guess? Uh, but anyway, it has a lot of custom jets in here, just really damn big ones. Here, there, and everywhere. It's got more in the back. It's got, like, multiple layers of them, uh, which means that this thing um, can take a stupid amount of punishment and, like, it'll stay flying. Uh, you basically need to knock out, I don't know, at least half, probably more uh, custom jets before this thing actually falls out of the sky. At which point it has barraged you in the face multiple times with those giant thumper missiles. And annoyingly as well, because this thing is mostly made out of heavy armor, you can probably, let's see, block counter, heavy armor wedge. By far the most common block on this thing is heavy armor wedges. Uh, the more damage it takes, the lighter it gets, and so the easier the time it has staying up in the air. So that's quite cunning. Uh, design there really is just like all right before you get to the custom jets you have to blow off all these really heavy blocks and so the thing can still fly and last uh this thing has heat decoys hither and thither i think where is it is that one i think that's one no those are local weapon controllers um i think let's see where are you where are you i think there's I think this right here is one. I think it's... No, that's a smoke generator. What is this? So, what's here? Aha! Here it is. Uh, there's heat decoys just here, quite cunningly as well. And there's one right at the top up there. I think it's where the fire is, which is quite uh, quite convenient. Is there lore on this thing, by the way? I just want to check if there's lore. Is there lore? There's no lore. I want to, I want to see lore for this. I want to see lore for this. Let's see here, what do we got, what do we got, is there... Nope, it's not here, where is it? There's a heat decoy somewhere on top here, I'm not sure where it is exactly, hold on. East Mert, shrink blocks, let's see, what's this, that, yep, there it is. Oh, the heat decoys look different. Oh, I'm silly, I was looking for the wrong thing entirely. So yeah, it's got two of them. And uh, set to maximum uh, power, so... Ooh, sign! Dedicated to all the most steadfast soul I know. Conquered all the hardships and pain life dealt. It blossomed into something beautiful despite it all. For all the burden upon your shoulders, yet you still give so much to others. I wish you respite so you may get a chance to breathe. Look upon a bright future of my dazzling sun far. Okay, I really want to know who or what that is referring to, because that's very sweet. I like that. Oh, I feel bad hating this thing now. It's a labor of love. Um... But yeah, so um, whenever you uh, get something that aims at hotspots, uh, you'll notice it's aiming for the chin and the forehead, so to speak, first. Uh, which means uh, you're not going to take out the custom jets immediately. Now, that's all the strength, so that's a long list. We've already been yapping on for about uh, 15 minutes or so. So what about the weaknesses? Well, this doesn't really have many, so... Um, one of the weaknesses definitely is that, uh, like pretty much all Great Talon airships, uh, this thing is hydrophobic. So if we do here, actually, maybe we can just do it like this. Does this thing have PIDs? Let's find out. Let's uh, uh, turn off. 
So are you gonna fall out of the sky? Nope, you are a clever PID person. So instead, we're just going to drop you in the ocean and see how you do. And whoop! Nope, not quite. So it's not quite as bad, it's probably just because it's because of its shape, but uh, needless to say, if uh, it spawns too low, actually if it spawns like too low in wavy water, which isn't very likely, uh, basically if it's stuck in the water it can't get itself out, so that is a weakness. It also has no lamb system, so if you look inside here, it's like the Empyrean. I'm not sure what the rule set is for Great Talon airships these days, Do they, if they're not just not allowed to have lambs or anything like that. Um, but yeah, there's no lambs in here, so to speak. Uh, none at all, really. So, that is a weakness. It means you it doesn't really have any defense against really strong shells, uh, or big shells, rather, apart from the shields and its absolutely crazy amount of armor. And that's basically it. Like, um, it's hard to cheese this thing. Like, uh, I don't think... Yeah, so no, it has particle cannons, and uh, these Sabo guns have enough uh, muzzle velocity that um, the thing can probably do terrible things to submarines as well. Let's just, let's just see that. Let's do a testy test. Let's go here. What is our favorite submarine to test against? Black Current is almost certainly going to win. Uh, let's just, let's just chuck in a cyclone and see what happens. Most of the armament of this thing is not set up to counter submarines at all. And if I do that, yeah, the, whoop, hold on. Yeah, okay, the cyclone has lost some stuff. Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, those, uh, those Sabo guns are absolutely no joke. But because it's firing from an elevation and because the shells are just so fast, they don't care. They'll easily just tear straight through uh, any submarine that's not deep enough. It's probably good enough, to, and the missiles can still hit it, so... Yeah, you can't cheese this with submarines, you can't really cheese it uh, with small, fast aircraft, because particle cannons and all that. You can't really even cheese it with, like, um... with, like, space cheese. Let's go here. Let's just, for giggles, spawn an Adominus and see what happens, because, uh, those Sabo guns uh, can fire straight up. Yeah, the Dominus is already winning, so the Pyre probably can beat it just fine. Okay, maybe not. The Dominus, in case people are wondering, that thing's new. Also, the Pyre is still winning, despite that volley. Deacon's Christmas, though. Woo, baby! Well, so much for the advice I was going to give later. Alright, so uh, let's move on. How do you survive this? Well, the Dominus is currently demonstrating how not to do that. Evading it is uh, absolutely not the way to do it. This thing's going to hit you, probably. Most likely. Uh, so, firstly, the, what you definitely need is a lot of missile defense. And good missile defense at that. Uh, because of those giant thumper missiles in the front. So... You better bring your A-plus Seawiz and your A-plus uh, missile interceptors and all that jazz. Uh, not, um, you can't really uh, fool the lasers with smoke, uh, because laser-guided missiles, uh, because they're beam riders and they don't really care, they just follow, uh, they have their guidance pointing backwards, so to speak, they just follow the laser wherever it points. And, um, yeah, so yeah, that's not going to work very well, so yeah, Seawiz, and are you gonna dunk yourself in water? No, you're not. You're clever. So sea whiz, interceptors, that kind of thing. Just something that can, at the very least, weaken that missile volley before it rips your head off. Uh, you also need kamikaze proofing. So this is a recurring a theme in these most wanted. So like with the Empyrean, like uh, with the Leviathan and all that, uh, you absolutely need something to take care of those ICBMs. If you do not, they will kill you. Uh, just ask the Singularity. Uh, she found out the hard way. And the shield projectors, you absolutely need those uh, because these, uh, individually, these Sabo shells um, don't technically do that much damage. If you have thick enough armor, you can stop them, but also um, they fire reasonably quickly. Something that I kind of forgot to mention. Oh, what are we doing out here? 
Oh, that's why I turned the nukes off earlier. Uh, so they fight. Oh, excuse you. Reload. 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 Reload, please. What the hell is going on? Why are you not loaded with anything? Interesting. That might be an error. Uh, anyway, so, alright. These things don't fire as fast as I thought they would. 17 RPM, and this one's not loaded? That's weird. Um, but anyway... What the? And these things fire really quickly? What? What the hell am I looking at? Is this bugged? No, it's not bugged. So no, I was right. Well done, me. Uh, so almost 50 rounds per minute is easily fast enough to uh, chunk your armor off, as uh, the Pyre has now demonstrated against um, the poor satellite thing whose name I've already forgotten. Uh, you also should blow up its face pretty quickly. So this is, again, typical from the depths thing, is like um, sometimes you just need to blow things up in order to uh, make sure... Uh, you deal with things quickly enough. So even something like this, let's see if it actually... Actually, let's turn off the deco so you can actually see what's happening. Uh, remove over a thousand decorations and mimics, so right there you can see the large missile hatch. Maybe I should have used a plasma burst. Anyway, so basically you do need to punch it in the face enough just so um, you can, at the very least, take the thumper heads off these huge missiles, because if you don't... Here's the difference. So, here we have this thing, 450 damage uh, per meter per second, and then you have this thing, which is half of that. That does make a big difference. So, yeah, you do need to hit it in the face uh, quickly enough that it can't get off uh, multiple volleys of these thumpers on you, because that really hurts. Uh, and also, you need to make sure you have broadside settings that don't make your ships try and turn their tail towards the thing, which is really annoying and I'm still working on that. Okay, so how do you kill it? Well, thankfully I have some uh, test fortresses. I actually uh, spent some time testing weapons against the pirate. It's good to test against. Um, the first and most important thing is to aim for hot blocks because you absolutely need to kill those jets so it falls out of the sky. So let's go here, let's go to my prototype fortresses. Let's go to this, my giant thing. So this is Overkill. This is a turret that I basically uh, just ripped off uh, the number 500 canoe. Um, if you haven't seen that, check some of my other videos. It's a big silly thing. Anyway, this is probably Overkill, so just pretend this is multiple turrets instead of just one big one. And um, basically the whole idea is, is that this thing has an IR camera up here and the aim point settings is set to uh, target hot blocks and focus them down for a full minute each and it can take out the heat decoys fairly quickly and hopefully that also means that it can get to shooting the custom jets sooner rather than later. So right now I can immediately see it's aiming for the heat de decoys on top. Wow and that ICBM just uh, dunked itself in the water. And so, as kinetic resistant as the pyre is, uh, strong kinetics are still a really good way to deal with it. Because, like, anything that isn't heavy armor just gets shredded. Can't actually tell what this is aiming at. If you, in case you're wondering what shells these are, they're very, very simple. They're just AP head, 180 degree frag, timed fuse, and an emergency ejection defuse. And they do pretty good. It's a good general purpose shell. You can see, I think quite a few of them are just um, getting pinged off those shields, which is annoying. So, taking out a turret, it's aiming, I'm not sure what that's aiming for, probably aiming for the custom jets at the back. And just lost a turret, so in I don't know how long, we've done over a million kinetic damage, but that's kind of what you need to deal with, because this is such a compact uh, design. Disruptors are probably also a very good idea, uh, just to mix in there, just to make sure that those shields don't ruin your life. There you see the heat decoys on top being taken out, and this follows a very similar pattern. Once the heat decoys are gone, it usually goes straight down the middle and focuses on the custom jets. So, what else, what else? So, yeah, another thing is that um, aiming for the hot blocks, aiming for the jets in particular, it helps uh, whatever your weapon systems just aim for the more vulnerable parts of the craft in general. 
Because otherwise they might just be aiming for random uh, heavy armor wedges, which, by the way, just to remind you, it is the most, by far the most common block uh, on this craft. So yeah, there is that. Um, also, uh, while we're talking, while we're shooting at this with an APS, you can see custom jet bits falling out there. Uh, let's talk about plasma. Uh, when I first learned about plasma and how, what kind of craft is meant to counter just heavy armor wedge spamming. Uh, I immediately thought of the Pyre. It is the poster child for the kind of thing that uh, Plasma is meant to counter, and it does. Um, you can have a reasonably compact Plasma gun uh, that can rip chunks off this thing fairly quickly. However, you still kind of need to aim for hot blocks in order to, you know, take this thing down in any reasonable uh, length of time. If you don't do that, it just wastes time shooting at all the heavy armor which basically its whole job is to be shot at. So yeah, there is that. Um, it's usually around 70% health that the pyre falls out of the sky uh, from this treatment. You can see it's kind of going in there. So right there, you'll see that an entire tar- two entire turrets have fallen off. Three! And this is why aiming for hot blocks has benefits aside from taking out the jets. Um, where is it? Here it is. So you'll see here that there's this just this one uh, like, you know, central part uh, of the pyre, it's actually on rubber, which is very interesting. Um, aiming for hot blocks, since there's uh, since this is a front sider and there's uh, custom jets both fore and aft of these main turrets, you aim for hot blocks, it means you're far more likely to decapitate these turrets. Like, I pretty much never see it um, unless, like, you aim for hot blocks. Oh. We're falling out of the sky at 75% health. Yes, this is what you want. This is what you want in... I wasn't timing that. I did time it before. And right there, you can see that, um, well, these timed frags aren't really doing anything anymore because time frag. Uh, but we've successfully dropped a pyre straight into the ocean. So there's the key. You need something that can get through all that and um, basically uh, tear out the engines. So let's do a plasma demonstration just to show you uh, what do. Let's go here. So plasma test three heat aim. This is this is called plasma three because this is like the third plasma gun I uh, made. It's pretty decent. Like you make one good plasma gun, you've made them all really. Uh, and this is the stats. So charges used for projectile 39, 60 RPM. When in doubt, no matter how big a plasma gun you have, uh, just match. Um, just make the charges per second uh, match how many charges are generated per second and set the RPM to 60 and it's fairly idiot proof really. So let's do that and let's spawn in the pyre. Just want to point out that um, this is probably going to be only a little bit faster and in case you think it's unfair for me to compare this smaller plasma gun uh, to that giant APS gun, uh, these cost about the same. They cost a lot. Let's just show you how much this costs. This uh, this one turret costs more than some ships do, like almost 400,000 materials. And as you can see there, we've already done, well, almost half a million plasma damage right there. So, once again, it looks like they're aiming for... What are they aiming for? Maybe a heat decoy in the back, maybe some jet in the back there, and zap. So right there, like, this is where Plasma is really demonstrating um, its worth. Because you can see that it's just chunking its way in there. It's just getting in there and absolutely cooking the custom jets. You can see custom jets just falling off no one's business. And there goes that heat decoy. So yeah, this is exactly what Plasma was really designed to do. It's just really punishing very compact uh, heavy armor spamming designs like this. Just getting right in there in no time. Alrighty, so uh, another thing is like um, something that was being demonstrated by what is that thing called? Uh, the Dominus. Is that shooting this from above is quite a good tactic because you know it's a front sider. Most of the stuff is in the front. Uh, just uh, you got to be better than the Dominus at surviving being shot back. So yeah, much thinner armor on top. All the heavy armor wedges are pointing forward. And you can also get away with really strong piercing particle cannons because piercing particle cannons don't really care about armor stacking, or do they? 
Um, I don't remember. But they also just, they can get through this. Um, but it needs to be a big particle cannon uh, to get all through all that health. And also big damn rail guns. You can't go wrong with a big rail gun. Um, big rail gun can do this. Like, you can just imagine the APS I was showing before. And now imagine uh, that those shells were railgun uh, shells instead. Yeah, you can you can deal with this. In fact, with the recent change uh, to how uh, to the armor penetration of hollow point shells, you could uh, actually make a hollow point gun. In fact, maybe I tried that. I don't remember. You could make a hollow point railgun that can do something quite similar to what this plasma gun is doing. Just have it do full damage to heavy armor, like 60 AP, and then just... Whoopsie daisy, yep, oh wow, into the drink you go at 86% health. Aim for the jets, people, even if you ignore everything else about this video, aim for the jets, aim for hot blocks. Eh, what else can we do? Um, crams do work, by the way, uh, on the pyre, but you do have to be close enough so that the pyre isn't constantly turning, uh, because if you keep your distance too much, or... Uh, if you're trying to run away from the pyre and you just curve away from it, like, um, the crams will just kind of miss. They do have the advantage. Let's spawn in. What's a giant cram cannon I have? I'm pretty sure I have one. Uh, do, 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 giant super sub canoe. Oh, these are the. These are the uh, crams that I ended up putting on the Drakenslang, actually. So this is nice. This is perfect. Uh, let's go here, spawn you in. Did I set the target prioritization up correctly? I did not, so let's just do that. Aim point selection, let's just do that. Aim for hot blocks. And let's have a look at you. So, for shooting from a static fortress, crams work just fine because the, uh, the pyre is a, like quite a vertical target and it just kind of... Um, doesn't move that much. However, um, if it's turning, that's when you've got a problem. So let's see here. These are damn big crams, by the way. Um, how much damage do they do per shot? Let's just double check. At about... Hello? So yeah, they're not even fully packed yet. And... Stop! You can see that they do... Almost 300,000 KD, uh, almost 25,000 explosive damage, and then almost 130,000 damage per fragment. Uh, hollow point and AP, so wham, and... So yeah, piercing packs. Uh, ignore the hollow points on that, by the way, because uh, they're back when I was trying desperately to make hollow points look cool. You do want a nasty AP uh, cram to just dig in there. Okay, so uh, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, another thing is, um, right, so part of the reason that crams do actually, well, right there, you can see we've got a problem here. Why aren't you firing? Um, is that... Where was I? Damn it. Um, crams do arc very slightly, and they tend to be more likely to, like, arc over the heavy armor wedges. What the hell are you doing, dude? Oh, there you are. Oh, you are firing, great. So, they didn't really do it there. Uh, but yeah, I see crams often, like, arcing straight over this massive wedge of armor in front and kind of sinking a little bit further back where it's a little bit thinner, so that's handy. Um, you also want to aim, set aim point, except if they're cram cannons, uh, to linger on blocks so they can actually penetrate. Oh, that's a good example right there of, um, crams arcing over and hitting, uh, somewhere, uh, hitting in the thinner armor. So yeah, you do want to set them to linger on blocks so they actually get through that armor thickness, because otherwise you're just going to be stripping the paint off, so to speak, which isn't very helpful. And... Yeah, also, Heat and Hesh uh, do work against this thing. Hesh especially, because, um, well, Hesh loves heavy armor. Um, and will just continually spawn fragments that do uh, almost uh, full damage to heavy armor blocks, so... If you're really stuck, you can just spam a big hash gun at this and, like, you know, you don't even have to worry about lambs or anything like that because, well, this doesn't have any lambs. 
Okay, so there's a bunch of timing here. The fastest I've managed to drop this thing into the ocean is actually using uh, that AP frag gun I showed off. Like, that actually beats plasma because it's, well, very damage efficient, really. And I think it's time for a live demonstration of how to beat this thing. And uh, once again, we're going to break out t Stally for this because um, uh, the Drakenslang can beat the Pyre, but it's... Um, a little bit embarrassing, she doesn't do as good a job as I would like. So we're gonna hop over to the Custom Badass Simulator, um, so you can see firsthand how to do it. Unless this drops it into the water immediately. No, it does not. That is unfortunate. Off to the Battle Simulator we go. Alrighty, here we are on the Custom Battle setup. Over on the left, we have the Pyre. Over on the right, we have good old T Stolly. Not quite ready for retirement, despite all her flaws. And hopefully this is a good demonstration of how to take on the Pyre. It's not perfect, um, because the T-Stali does take a bit of a beating, and also, I would like to point out, uh, she is more expensive than the Pyre. She's 1.8 million materials. The Pyre is... Damn it, can we please? Can we please? Is... Damn it, can we please? Is uh, about 400,000 materials cheaper, so... This isn't a totally fair fight, uh, if I had something that was exactly 1.4 million materials that could beat the pirate, trust me, I will be using it. This is demonstration purposes, um, please don't, like, you know, take, the takeaway shouldn't just be use a more expensive craft, because that won't necessarily work. Let's have a go. So immediately, you can see shots fired, and those freaking Sable shells, man, immediately are just, uh, Heading over and just making a mess, and you can see here that these missiles have absolutely stupid amounts of health, and the amount of um, uh, the amount of uh, missile interceptors over on T Stali, it's decent. It's not quite enough to stop that, so yeah, that is a problem. Uh, also, you can see this is a modified. Oh no, it isn't a modified version of the. Damn it! Oh well, we can still win. I actually made a test version of T-Stolly specifically that aims for hot blocks. Oh, damn it. And this is why you don't actually want to get too close to the pyre, because otherwise it drops nukes right on top of you. Ah, oh, crap. So anyway, this is a lag fest, and this is something you preferably want to avoid. Is, um, let's see, are those gonna hit? That hit? Whoa, that took a turret off. Um, you don't want your ships to turn their butt towards uh, the enemy. Although, for a broadside, it is quite handy to have it uh, shift around so that uh, it spreads that thump damage out a little bit, because you don't want to uh, uh, get your guts ripped out by this. So, yeah. Uh, this is a laggy, laggy, laggy uh, thing. Really should have spawned in the heat thing. Oh, well. And this is where probably you can see the problem with crams or not. It is really luck of the draw whether those crams hit or not. AP crams are very, very nice. We didn't take out any custom jet components there. t Stali still is in the lead uh, for the most part. But yeah, it looks like... Let's see here. Yeah, so taking out uh, these... What do you call it? Let's take out these missiles on the front here it does make a big difference. And as you can see here, uh, you do have to hit it in a decent... Well, this is actually a really good shot. It's just straight up disabled this missile silo. But yeah, you can see that was a pretty strong cram and it's just stopped dead. Um, in the middle there by all those wedges. Those delicious potato wedges. Those heavy armor wedges. And let's see, does this little ICBM get cooked? What the hell are you... There, thank goodness. Alright, so right there, that's why you gotta bring your lasers and pack along with you, because otherwise, uh, those ICBMs will ruin your life completely. And the main APS on the T-Stali isn't doing a super good job. It's an AP heat shell, which means it does okay, uh, but yeah. Yeah, 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 you kinda need better than that. Alright. Are the crams still firing? Yes, yes they are. I think there's been slightly too many cram shells disabled. And yeah, once again, I'm... Oh no, there's a custom jet bit. There's a custom jet bit, we can see it. And where's that ICBM going? There it is! Zap! Yeah, it's also a good idea that if you're going up against things like this, like the Pyre, the Empyrean, other things that just keep spawning suicide craft, 
uh, you do need like redundant uh, laser systems because if you don't, uh, if you lose all your hit scan weapons, uh, then the ICBMs are going to have their way with you because this friggin' ICBM spawn is on the back, so you're not going to be able to kill it like very quickly unless you flank this thing, and good luck with that. I think a cram turret over on T Starley has been disabled. Deacons, hell, look at those missiles. Yep, that is definitely a disabled. Oh no, we lost. Oh jeez, look at that. Yeah, we're losing turrets fast. Uh, this is very much a DPS race, um, which is a problem because um, the pyre is a float is a flying brick, as I mentioned before. Which means it has an advantage in a DPS race because it's hard to damage. Let's see if that. E oh, hello! That actually did something. I really should have spawned in the thing that aims for hot blocks. I'm not sure why I didn't do that. Ooh. We have one laser left. Oh wow! Oh damn it! I kind of thought this thing was going to fall into the water. So you can see here, just like the pyre actually punches above its weight. Possibly because it's just a big stupid frontsider. And, oh hello, that's a lot of blocks falling off. Oh, that's actually just two turrets falling off. Yay! Yay! Yay, happy. You could also just, I guess you could just say screw it and like pelt this thing with EMP to take out the shields. And uh, then just laser it to hell and back. Is that more? Yes, that's good. Custom jets. Where did that... Okay. We're doing fine. We're doing good. t Stalley is holding her own. Yeah. Taking out the... This is kind of the problem, I guess, with uh, sticking your main weaponry right on the front where the enemy is guaranteed to shoot you. Oh, that was a beautiful cram shot. Uh, what was I saying before about cram shots? I should mention as well that one of the reasons we're using t Stalley rather than the Drakensung for this is because... The Dragon Song is so fast and just keeps orbiting uh, that the Pyre is constantly turning to face it, which means uh, Draki keeps missing uh, with her cram shells. Uh, since the Titan Song is slightly slower, um, she actually does better at uh, landing shots with her crams uh, on the Pyre. Which is a weird example, actually, of why sometimes it's better to have your craft be slow. Um, just because if you're dealing with fast stuff, if you're fast, uh, they're also fast and they're constantly like turning to face you. Uh oh. Laser, laser, laser. Oh no! Oh no! Oh dear. Oh, the laser survived. That's nice. Okay, so the pyre is almost dead. Like, this is what I was talking about. This stupid thing. This actually wonderful thing. I just remembered the sensitive message inside it. This thing keeps flying even though it should be dead by now. It really should be. It's lost most of its... It's lost almost all its turrets. It's lost all its turrets except that one APS and the friggin' pack thing. Uh, where's the... What is that? Was that a missile or was that the ICBM? I can't tell. Oh, there... I think the the T-Style only has one functioning cram cannon left. Let's go have a look. Um... The pirate might just still win this through attrition. Oh, it's got an APS turret as well. Are these just not even firing? Hello? That's really annoying. Normally the APS on t Starley gets disabled pretty quick. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, only one functioning cram cannon. That's very sad. That's very, very sad. Yes, custom jet parts. When you see custom jet parts fall out of this, that's very good news. Also, it doesn't even look that much different uh, when it doesn't have fleet colors. What else can we say? So... Yeah, like, damn, man. We've been going... This fight's been lasting for, you know, the better part of six minutes, and the pyre is really not... is really hanging in there. Oh, yep. Oh, there we go. Low health. Deacon's Christmas. Alright, so T-Starley can at the least do that, but again, you don't get many prizes for that border-wise, because T-Starley is 400,000 materials more expensive than this. Yeah, broads like, frontsiders tend to have an advantage against broadsiders to begin with, simply because they can focus all their armor and firepower just on the front. And yeah, T-Starley manages it, but only barely. 
or it feels only like barely. Really should just replace all the crams on this with uh, with APS guns like that. That would be fun. Um, uh, excuse me, coffee. So yeah, that is the most wanted of the pyre. Uh, is there time to go look at this thing while it sinks? Nope. She's gone. So yeah, that's uh, that's the most wanted for the pyre. Is just like I said before. If nothing else, aim for hot blocks. Uh, take off the heat decoys really quickly, and then just really let her have it uh, with um, really strong armor-piercing shells or plasma or particle cannons if you feel like it. Crams are okay, not ideal. Uh, missiles probably also okay, but also not uh, not ideal. And lasers, forget about it. Nope. <laughs> So yeah, that'll do. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.